Right, all right. Everybody, can you hear me okay? Just want to make sure everybody can hear. If you want to turn your cameras on so I can see someone instead of just a name. I am big on seeing your faces. I don't care if you're in your PJs or your house is a mess or what's going on, but I love to see your faces, okay? So if you want to turn your cameras on, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. Um, it looks like... I just need to make sure everybody's muted here. Um, okay, because I, I know some people, you're watching the replay, okay? So I didn't get to see your face, but for those of us that are here, I'm so excited that you're here to join me. Um, I am so glad you got the correct link because we had a little bit of a glitch in the Zoom link. Ah, there's Carol, I see Carol. <laughs> Looking beautiful as always. So I know some people, um, got the wrong link. So oh, I'm like hoping everybody that wants to be here is getting on. Okay. So anyway, let's get rolling. Okay. So 2024, are you guys excited about 2024? Raise your hand if you're excited. You've got another year to be alive, right? Yeah. Like God has given us another year to be on this earth, to make an impact. Okay. It's not just about us. Okay. We got to get our stuff in line so we can serve. Okay. So we can serve, so we can enjoy all of the blessings that God has created for us. Okay. It's so exciting. And the thing that excites me is it's more uh, it's about more than just us, okay? But we have to get our stuff in line. We got to get ourselves ordered out, okay? That way we can show up in the in the fullest way possible. Because God made us like this. Have you ever just looked at like a field of wild wildflowers? There's a place near us that has just fields of wildflowers. Oops, I'm going to mute somebody. Just got to keep everybody muted as they come in. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it gets crazy. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's this place south of us and it's just like all these different wildflowers. Okay. Some of us are sunflowers. Some of us are daisies and daffodils. Okay. We're just all this beautiful picture. And it really, it really does come down to who are we and how are we meant to shine in 2024? What does God have in store for us as his people, as, as his daughters? It's kind of a big role that we fill. So I just wanted to concrete that before we move into anything. Never underestimate the power of the role that you do play in life, of your effect on those that you serve, of your effect on your spouse, your children, your your parents, I mean, your friends, it just stretches to the most randomest of people. So don't underestimate that as we move into 2024, that yes, a lot of this work that we do is of benefit to us. But what about the benefit to others? Like, let's not overlook that, okay? So drop in the chat. I'm really curious to see for you guys as individuals. I like to work on a very intimate one-on-one -on -one basis, okay? I like to see the chat lighting up. I want to connect, okay? That's just me. I love to connect. So that's why I love your cameras on so I can see you. And I love to, to see the chat open up. So opening up the chat with what is something you already know you want to happen in 2024 or have already started in the year 2024? Hmm. I know. I know. I'm springing on y'all. <laughs> So I'll say it again. What's something you already know you want to happen or have already started in the year 2024? Um, I had this realization this morning because I was kind of um I was kind of like frustrated with somebody in my life. And I went, man, I'm I'm really tired of interacting with somebody who's so inconsistent with their routines. And I literally felt this like ding 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 moment of hmm. That's what my body's been having to deal with. My body's been having to deal with me being consistent with maybe my workout routines or my eating routines. It was like one of those, oh, wow. Okay. I'm sitting here frustrated at somebody because they're doing this and I have to interact with somebody who has inconsistent routines. And I'm like, wow, that's what my body's, that's what I've put my body through. Okay. Oh, we got people hopping in and out. We're getting Carol back in here. She fell out. 
<laughs> Carol's getting back in. So anyway, yes. All right. I'm going to start looking in the chat here because I see some answers that people are dropping in here. Okay. Let's see. Kimberly says, I've already started with a strict schedule of going to the gym and reading my body, my body. It says body, my Bible, my Bible. So I can grow both ways. Yes. Habit stacking. When we can habit stack and we can say, okay, I've got my Bible laying on top of my workout gear. Then we can have it stack those two goals. Kimberly, you can have it stack those. You can have like your Bible on top of your shoes or your shoes on top of your Bible, whichever one will kind of like make you go, oh yeah, there's, there's my Bible or, oh yeah, there's my shoes. Time to go to the gym. Okay. So Kim's got, got a plan going on of that strict schedule, going to the gym and reading her Bible. Tessa is really interested in good nutrition and moving more consistently. Yes, that consistency. Okay. We're always expecting our bodies to show up for us. Okay. I expected my body to show up for me today. Okay. I just did. I just expected to show up without like my face sliding off of my head. Right. <laughs> we expect our bodies to perform, but sometimes we're not performing for our bodies. We're like, Okay, I expect you to do X, Y, and Z, and I'm going to give you nothing. <laughs> so I love that, the consistency of moving more, okay, and the Bible reading and the exercise, okay? So that's what you're kind of wanting out of 2024. So what I would ask you is, did you want that out of 2023? Were those items on your list? in January of 2023. Okay. Tessa says yes. Ouch. It hurts. Doesn't it? It's like, ah, oh, how many times have I wanted this? How many times have I decided this? How many times have I determined? Have I made my plan? Have I even been strict with it? You know, how many times have I done it? Well, where did I fall off? Like, where are we falling off? Okay. That's why I'm doing this today, guys. That's why we're talking about a new way to new year. Okay. A new way because we have this old way. Okay. We have like the, I feel like there's these camps of like, I do new year's resolutions or goal setting, or I don't. And it does go both ways. Okay. So, um, I, I realized like I've done, I've done the different things. I've been like, I'm not going to do anything at the new year, but generally I do just naturally feel this, like, I don't know. I just feel this like, um, contemplation start um because everyone around us is doing the new year's resolutions right it's the time to hit your goals like if you're not going to do it in january you're not going to do it at all right that's what that's what we're we're geared in okay so i realized though that over the years my this this time of reflection it, it happens for me like um end of december and the first few weeks of January, just this, I don't know, it's just this season of like reflection. That's just the word that kept coming to me when I was thinking on this is reflection. And um, I just realized that it, it morphed over the years. I've tried, you know, a lot of different things in, in January and I realized, okay, this looks really different than anybody around me that I'm seeing. And then one of my clients, who's like, oh, you do really things, things really differently. So why don't you teach this class? And I was like, well, I wasn't going to do like a new year's kind of class because I just feel like it's going to get lumped in with all the like charge into the new year thing. Okay. So I don't, I don't, I didn't really want to do that, but when she requested it, I was like, okay, I can do this. Okay. I can do this and I can teach you guys kind of why I go about what I do. Okay. So, okay. I realized, um, I realized that like traditional New Year's resolutions, they're wrapped up in a lot of guilt, honestly. It's wrapped up in a, in a lot of like should haves. I should have already done this kind of thing. Um, And it honestly comes from that place oftentimes of overindulgence at the holidays. Because if you notice a lot of New Year's resolutions do hinge around food or exercise, okay? Food or exercise. Um, and a lot of times it's because we got so sedentary over the holidays. Like we were just like hanging out, watching Christmas movies. Okay. Um, you know, holiday gatherings where you just sit and eat all day long. Like who just was fooded out, fooded out by January 1st. I was like, oh, why have I done this to myself? 
<laughs> I'm so over food and I'm so over people. <laughs> so we have this, then this knee jerk reaction of, I need to do something drastic now. Okay. I'm fooded out. How am I here again? This is not the way I want to live my life. It's oftentimes our new year's resolutions are reactionary to, um, sorry, I'm just making sure everybody stays muted. Um, our reactionary to that, that funky area of overindulgence. So, um, I realized that they're oftentimes, um, you know, like tra traditional new year's resolutions. I just looked up the definition resolution. Okay. So it's like deciding what we're no longer going to do determination, solving problems. That's a good thing, right? That's, that's a good thing. I'm not knocking that. So great. Okay. But if you keep going down the list of resolution, what is a resolution? Okay. That's when you get to definition number five, like raise your hand. If you realize sometimes you need to dig a little deeper to get the good answers. Okay. Sometimes definition number one is not the answer. So definition number five is the smallest interval measurable by a scientific instrument. That's the definition of resolution. It's like when something turns, okay? It's a resolution. It's the smallest interval measurable by scientific instrument. What if that's literally all that it takes for you to reach your goals in 2024, okay? Are those small things. You're building something, a block, a block, a block at a time, okay? It's just a little bit at a time. So what if that resolving power in those increments, what if that's the key? What if that's just a big aha moment? Okay. All right. So, sorry. Got participants doing different things here. Got it. Okay. So, um, this is where I was thinking, okay. Remember how I said they're they're in they're rooted in guilt, okay? It's rooted in guilt a lot of times, okay? So you're actually working against yourself when you come from a place of guilt or shame or disgust or frustration. You're working against yourself. It's almost like an assault on you, okay? It really, really is. And I just I'm I'm wondering, are you ready to move into 2024 because it's time to, or because it's high time you did? There's a big difference, okay? There's a really big difference and it's high time I did this. It's all in shame and guilt. And it's just a, ugh, this yucky knot that's kind of nauseating, okay? Sometimes it's kind of gross, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can move into 2024 because you're ready. You're ready to move forward with these things. You've gained a little extra wisdom, some knowledge, and you're ready to take some resolution sized, <laughs> sized increments. Okay. So I, this, if you get nothing from today, I hope you get this one thing. So somebody drop it in the chat. Okay. List of achievements or experience in life. List of achievements or experience in life really 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 like there's a there's a hunk of meat here guys unless you're a vegan and then we can make it a hunk of bread okay so <laughs> okay a achievements a list of achievements or thank you so much tessa for dropping that in the chat because i really i really want everybody to get this at the end of 2024 do you want a list of achievements or do you want to have hit an entirely new level of experiencing life? Okay, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Are you wanting to have a list of achievements at the end of 2024? Or are you wanting to have hit an entirely new level of experiencing life? Somebody may be over there going, I, I don't get it. Like, I don't, what are we talking about here? I just, doo -doo -doo, not connecting here. What is the difference? Okay, you control your experiences, okay? That's all you have to control. You don't have to control everybody around you, your husband, your kids, your mom, your dad, your 
your grandma, your uncle, your everything, okay? You don't have to control everything. That gets really exhausting, honestly. Believe me, I've tried it. It gets exhausting. But when you can just stay in that place of controlling your experiences, then you don't have to control your circumstances. So little example, last night, it was co-op day, homeschool co-op, awesome, love it, okay? But it's a long day. I teach a class there, kind of like this, okay? So I teach a class there. I also teach, uh, well, I'm, I'm a helper in the games class. So I was literally playing Clue with eight to 11 year olds some of which who had never played that game. And I was teaching them, you know, how we stay focused, how we pay attention, how we aren't prideful and rude to others, how we move through the game like seamlessly, how we don't try to peek at the cards that everybody's showing, all of that stuff. So evening came, I got home, I was like, blah. And I was thinking, man, I really like to just go out to dinner. Like, I didn't even feel like heating up leftovers. I just, I would love, and I didn't say anything, but my husband came in, we chatted for a few minutes. He said, why don't we go out to dinner? Okay. So we go out to dinner. Remember, I'm talking about, I don't have to control my circumstances. I can control, control my experience. So we're sitting deep in conversation at this restaurant, Trey and I, my husband, and like, we've got four kids. So, you know, they're just like all around us and we're like deep. I'm practically coaching him in the middle of supper. Such an awesome conversation. When you're both coaches, it's awesome because you have these super deep conversations in the randomness of locations. So like my kids are all around and they're all over and they're, and they're spilling cups. Okay. They're spilling cups on the seats and they're putting like five pieces of pizza on their plate that I know they're not going to eat. And then Melania, she was the one with like four pieces of pizza on her plate. And she's like digging in my pasta, like scooping it over. I didn't feel any stress. I mean, I don't know if you guys felt stress mounting just as you heard my day. Legit. I didn't feel any stress. Okay. I didn't feel a lumpity bumpity of stress. I totally enjoyed it. I was like sharing my meal with Melania. It was fun. And when, when there was a mess, I just handed some paper towels and then the waitress came by and I was like, eh, need some extra paper towels, right? It just, it's a totally, I, I would have, you can, you can freak out because of the whole scene that I presented and the scene in your life that you're living that may be similar or really different, but you can freak out about what's going on around you and you can let it turn into stress or you can achieve this state. It's a whole new level. I'm like, this is a nice place to live. This is a nice place to be, okay? When you can reach this level of like, uh, things aren't creating stress for me. Like, they just aren't. So the, just a little example for you of like, what, what, is that, what does that mean really? So do you want to have a list of achievements? Do you want to be like, I lost 50 pounds. I lost 10 inches off my waist. And I um, totally like, decluttered my entire shed in 2024 and I have this whole list or do you want to be like do you want to get to the end of 2024 and be like man I love living life in my body yeah I went on some awesome hikes man those gym times in the morning they were golden it ended up being like this golden part of my day and on those days where I couldn't get to the gym you know I just it was just part of me to move my body so I would just put on like a workout dvd or something and like Man, I just, this was a really awesome 2024. Like, do you see the difference? Because the first list, I don't know about you. What is it? What does it bring up in you guys? That first list that I mentioned. Do you feel, um, drop in the chat. What do you feel when you think of that? Like the list of achievements that you've got to get done. Okay. Just, just thinking about that. And you can drop that in, in the chat. Okay. So pressure, Tessa feels like pressure from that list. Um, and then also drop in the chat, um, you know, in a few minutes, maybe, uh, what did you feel when I described like the 2024, where it was all about my experience through 2024? Think about that. Drop that in the chat. So while you guys are mauling that over, I'm going to move forward. So this is the thing that I'm just like, oh. okay. It sounded more, way more fun and enjoyable to Tessa. Yes. It's like so much lighter. So January is actually a very unnatural time to jump into new changes and exert a lot of effort and make big changes and grow. Okay. 
It's not ideal. It is not natural. Okay. So, um, when you think about it, like, first of all, we'll just go biblical. I think most of us in the room here today are biblical. And if you're not, that's okay. 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 But just for me, Bible, the word of God, my relationship with God, very important aspect of my life. So a lot of times I head to the scriptures to see what's up in the old Testament. God actually declared when the new year was to be. Okay. He declared to us when the new year was to be, okay? So in Exodus, I'm going to read it to you, King James Version. In Exodus 12, 2, he says, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you, the month of Passover. Passover is to be on the 10th day of the month, okay? He said, okay, Passover is going to be on the 10th day of the month. But that month, that's the first month of your year for you. Do you guys know when that is? Do you know what, what month that is? Somebody drop in the chat when they know what month that would be. What, like, American month, okay? It gets a little bit confusing to run these dates because we don't operate off of the same calendar that they did in Bible times. Yes, April. God instituted the new year to be in April. Okay, now, I I don't believe we're sinning, okay? You're not going to sin, if you're not, if you're not celebrating on a new year in April, or if you're not celebrating, or if you are celebrating in January, I really don't think you're just gonna be in sin to do that. Okay. He was talking to his people in the old Testament, but I just started reflecting. Okay. So <laughs> also we do, we must realize, okay. That January, the, um, where the whole January New Year's resolutions thing came from is actually, um, uh, let's see, it was in Roman times, I think. They switched it over and they said, he said, like, this is going to be the new year. It's the month of Janus. It's the God, it's in celebration of the God Janus, January Janus. And they, you know, decided they would make resolutions and they would toast with strong drink and different things like that. So yet again, I don't think you're, you're going to be sinning to, you know, Ooh, ring in the new year. Okay. I don't, I don't think so, but if I were to choose one over the other, I'd probably choose the, the new year, the biblical new year that God declared. That's what I would choose. So let's look at nature then. So then I, I always go like Bible. Then I go like, okay, let's look at what does creation reflect about God? Creation reflects God. It reflects his heart and his values. It just reflects him. So <laughs> I was like January, middle of winter. Do I see things growing? Do I see things making big changes? Do I see this energy coming out of January? No, we don't see that. Okay. Somebody drop in the comments. What kind of things do we see in January? What's happening in God's creation in January? Go ahead and drop that in the chat. Okay. Dormancy. The plants and the trees are conserving their energy. Yes, death. There's just, you know, the grass isn't, the grass isn't green right now, okay? It's there, you know, it's still there, but it's in hibernation. It's a time of resting, dormancy, conservation. Everything's conserving its energy. Snow, ice, cold. What does snow and ice and cold make us want to do? It makes us want to go inward, okay? We go inward. I get on my couch <laughs> with my blanket, my wool blanket. That's what snow and ice and cold makes me want to do, okay? But let's not fight our environment that we were placed in by God, okay? So those who resolve to do better and start their new year, they go through this process of goal setting, okay? And it it's maybe two hours max that you'll spend on goal setting, maybe, if you're really serious about it, I mean, to be honest, sometimes it's 10, 10 minutes for people. Um, and it's kind of like a to-do list style. I just crack up when I think it's kind of like a grown-up version of a letter to Santa. Like, if you really think about it, I was just like cracking up when I was thinking about it. I'm like, our New Year's resolutions list are kind of like a grown-up version of a of a list to Santa of like the things we want for Christmas. 
and they're not really backed by anything. Just, just a little side note. <laughs> um, and that's that. The goals are set. Bam. It is go time, right? It's go time. Get out there. Get walking. Get to that gym. Figure out your Bible reading plan. You know, make things happen. Okay. It's go time. Okay. But if you don't, I don't know, if you don't do the proper footwork, you end up in a heap. Okay. And you feel worse because now you have set a goal and you haven't achieved it. Now you've experienced something called failure. Okay. You've experienced failure. And you feel like your goals are now unachievable. Okay. And then another year rolls around and you feel desperate again because of the overindulgence, right? Because like some of you said, my goals for 2024 are the same ones that I had in 2023. Something's not working. Something's not happening, right? Okay. Something's not getting you there. So remember, it's just not a natural time to be jumping into action. Okay. Okay. And those who don't goal set or have resolutions, maybe you're like, I don't even do any of this, Claire. What are you talking about? Chances are you have something called learned helplessness. Okay. Learned helplessness is when you've tried and failed and tried and failed and tried to failed, And now your goals are unachievable. So you don't even try you new year's rolls around and you're like, if anybody says anything about new year's resolution, I'm going to kill them. Okay. You're just like, no, no. And no. So that can happen. Okay. So what time of year do things naturally grow? Okay. Not only did God tell us when the new year is to be, and it is, it is in April. Okay. But when does the natural environment you were created to be in, when does it scream to you? Energy, life, growth. I mean, you can feel it. I feel it. Okay. We all know like, you know, March, March 19th is the first day of spring. You can feel it coming. Every year I say, man, like I just, I feel it coming. You feel the energy. You feel the life. You see the little buds on the trees, the daffodils start breaking through and you feel like this explosion of life, especially if you spend time outside in your natural habitat that God created you in. You sense this. It is so energizing. Okay, does that not sound like a really good idea to take action in your life, especially on areas that year after year after year you've made no progress in? You might be just expending so much time in winter during your dormant season that <laughs> by the time spring hits, you're in full blown learn helplessness. You're just like, that didn't work. And I don't even know what to do at this point. And you now don't have the overindulgence from the holidays to motivate you. So you just go kind of back to your status quo. Okay, so does that mean we just stumble through life until April? Like, I'm just, do we just like do nothing until April? Thankfully, no. Okay, there's things to do to prep you for growth, okay? Think about, what happens to prepare our beautiful creation for earth, right? Or for growth. You know, we till the, we till the ground. We, it warms up first of all. So it's not a frozen block of ice that we're trying to dig and grow something in. <laughs> okay. We're trying to sow seeds in the ice. It's not necessary. So prepping, prepping the ground. Okay. That's what happens there's all kinds of things. Winter is a time of reflection. Okay. That's the word that I just did that just kept coming to me over and over and over again was the word reflection. It's a time of reflection for us. We go, remember how we said we go inward. Okay. We go inward when the snow and cold, it's like, put me on the couch with my wool blankie. Okay. It's the same thing. We go deeper inward. We start asking ourselves very amazing questions okay questions like what's not what it, what is it in my life that's really no longer serving me what kind of things do I need to let die just like Kimberly said some things die out okay what do I need to let die out are there some relationships are there some habits 
that I can just let die. I don't need to get my shovel out and start growing something. Maybe I could just let something die. Maybe I could just let old habits be old habits that I just no longer turn to. Uh, what do I really want? What do I really, really, really want? It's very interesting. <laughs> That's one of the hardest questions I found for people to answer is what do you want? If anything could happen, what is it you want? We, we're very clear about what we don't want, okay? I don't want my kids tracking mud through the house. I don't want my husband leaving piles of clothes on the floor. I don't want him coming in late and wasting all his time on things that don't matter. Like, I don't, I just don't want my parents to interact with me in this way anymore. I'm just tired of dealing with their stuff, okay? You're not the only one that's dealing with this stuff. There's a lot of people that are very clear on what they don't want. But what you focus on flourishes and what you neglect dies. It dies out, okay? So maybe that it, this is that time to neglect some of those things. Hey, I just, I don't even need to deal with the drama. I get to reflect. I get to let things die out, okay? It's very interesting because one of the women I worked with lately, I asked her the question. I said, well, what is it you want? If I could just wave a magic wand like we were in a fairy tale, ta-da, what are you going to get? What do you want? Mm, come on. And she looked at me so blank and she's like thinking and thinking and thinking. And she's like, I just see, I mean, her brain just goes blank. And she's like, finally, she says, well, I feel like it's a split between like more time and then like less things in my life to take up the time. So either one, like maybe cutting things out of my life. So I have more time or just like, if I could just be handed more time, I'm like, well, more time. Is it possible for you to get more time? Okay. No, no. We just, the sun rises and the sun sets from the beginning of creation. And that's the day, the morning and the evening, the first day, the morning and evening, the second day. Okay. The time, you're not going to get any more time. The second one is like, listen, it's a little bit hard to like take scissors to your life, okay? That can get really tedious if you're like trying to cut things out. So it's like time to get more curious. So, okay, I'm like, okay, so what I worked with her, you know, to take her to that deeper level, she finally realized she's needing more energy. Man, there's a million roads to get more energy, it's impossible to get more time and it's really hard to cut things out of your life, but there's a million ways to get more energy. You can do any number of things. Oh, sigh of relief. That goal that I thought was impossible is actually quite doable. And there's a lot of different things I can try to reach my goal. So just an example, okay, of it's okay if your, your brain goes blank. A lot of my clients, I have them do a desires list and Sometimes it's challenging for them at first, okay? Um, it's just a little challenging. Um, I also do something with my kids called a desire circle. It's just, we do it. It's a clear thing. And I usually do it around devotions. We gather in a circle, we hold hands, we draw a circle on the ground and we push the circle out, we make it bigger. And I say, what do you want? What do you want? And we just start, we throw things into the circle. Like, I just, I want to feel amazing today. I want to feel joy. I want God to be with us today. Like, I want to feel his presence. I want $50. I just want $50 to come randomly to me. Like, I want my husband's business to prosper. And I want to serve my clients with everything that's in me. And we're just like throwing stuff. And Malaya is over there like, I want a pink tractor. And I want an airplane. And we just throw our things in our circle and we just go down to the floor and we pull all of that up and we pat it into our bodies and we say, I choose this. Okay. Just like we put on a garment of praise. Okay. Or we put on the full armor of God. Sometimes it's like, this is mine. I'm taking it. Okay. Those desires are mine. And it's okay if when you first start and you're like, I'm going to do a circle of desire. I'm going to do a desire circle with my kids. And you're standing there and you're going like, I really don't know. Like, I don't know. It's common, okay? But it's part of why 2024, your goals are the same as 2023. They weren't well defined and it takes, it's like a depth. It's not something you can sit down for 10, 30 minutes or two hours and discover. It's deeper than that, okay? So it's it seems faster. Okay, guys, I like speed. 
to a fault sometimes. I sometimes get frustrated because things aren't happening as fast as I want. It feels faster to shoot from the hip than to take the time to really do the work to go deep, deep, deep. Because generally those desires of your heart are deep, okay? They're underneath layers of failures and disappointments and frustrations, okay? They're really, really under there where you don't even have any hope for them anymore, okay? You don't even recognize them as a desire or a goal because you don't feel like they're possible anymore. So they don't even come to the surface to make it to your list, some of the most important things. And a lot of times we're just thinking what we want. It's all this stuff like, I just want all this stuff, but what are you wanting that's deeper? Like, what is more money in your bank account going to make you feel? Like, what What about that or a bigger house? What, what are you really searching for, okay? It comes down to that, what is the desired state that you're hoping to achieve? Remember that experience? What are you wanting to experience through 2024, okay? When you get to the end, it's not just some list of achievements at the end, but what is this experience? Were you able to stay in that desired state? So teaching a 10-week class, okay, that takes you through those processes from reflection to assessment, implementation, and across the bumps that are going to come up, okay? Because sometimes we expect, this is where I'm started, this is where I want to be. Boom. There's something called the valley of latent potential that you'll go through that lives really bumpy. Okay. That's why that's part of why it's a 10 week program because that valley of latent potential generally happens about week four, anyway, three, five, seven, it happens somewhere in there. Okay. So interesting to note. And sometimes you don't have somebody to pull you through it. It gets really messy really fast and you quit. That's why we have the cycle of start, stop. That's why sometimes, most of the time, our new year goals are the same as not just last year's. Sometimes it's like a decade of this, guys. No shame, no guilt here, okay? Because we've all done it. So some of the results, I did a beta group, okay? I did a beta group. And these are just some of the things that women experience because I don't want you to just take my word for it, okay? I want you to see the results, okay? If you're like me, you like results. Like type results in the comments if you want results. It's not just about like, oh, that was fun. We want things to be fun, but at, at the end of it all, don't we really want something to change? Don't we want something to happen? We want a result. That's a God-given desire in our heart because everything produces fruit in its season, okay? Because just like spring is going to give us that energy to <sighs> harvest comes in in the fall, okay? You don't want to reach fall again and not have a harvest. So this is what one of them said. Through the Back to Me program, I realized I was giving a lot of time and energy into things that were really draining. When I sat down to evaluate those areas and really look at what I wanted my life to look like, I was then able to put all that energy into creating what I wanted instead of all of that injury, energy feeling like it was going into nothingness. Sometimes you're throwing your energy in the wrong direction. When we throw it in the right direction, that's when we see results. Um, after all these years, I have let fear and in intimidation of the process hinder me from going after what I really want. Now goals and desires for what I want fuel me to go through the process, regardless of that fear and intimidation. Okay, this is real. This is a thing. I had someone look at me and say, you know what? Some of those that are knowledgeable at the, about the most healing modalities, the most healing things they can do, they don't touch them with a 10-foot pole because they know it can be really painful to go through it. So oftentimes we're in, in intimidation of the process of reaching our goals. But she was able to overcome that through the Back to Me program and reach goals. So... Lots of other programs, She's this, this person said, 
I'm just reading a list. <laughs> I want them in their words, okay? Lots of programs and with a notebook full of notes and one or two small takeaways that stay with you. The Back to Me program changes the very core of your thinking. By the end of 10 weeks, your thoughts are different. So the way you live is different. The way you live is actually different. It's that transform yourself by the renewing of your mind, okay? That's what I'm all about over here. You know it, okay? So I could keep reading, you know, I've got them, I've got them printed out here. I could keep reading all these testimonials. Okay. So there's so many things that shut us down from desiring. That's what I'm realizing. If Satan can grab you in the throat of desire and strangle the life out of your desires, he wins, okay? He stops you before you even start. And he can keep you on this New Year's resolution, goal list, whatever you want to call it, letter to Santa, okay, that keeps not happening. And he's like, huh, I'm so glad we have a month called January where everyone gets tripped up. <laughs> That's part of why I wanted it to be at the end of the month, okay? I wanted to, um, everybody to be past all the motivation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's get back into Tessa maybe looks like she even has a blankie. She's got this down. <laughs> Snuggled up, right? It's a time of reflection. So you can start on a good path, but there are, there are beliefs that can shut you down quick. Okay. If he can get you in the throat of desire and stop you there, he will. If that doesn't work, bumps in the path. Okay. And then one bump in the road, that's just a little bit too big and you don't make it over it. Okay. You give up because you're, you're, you're just going at it. Okay. And you've expended a lot of energy by that point. So your dreams are too important for that. Okay. You know how at the beginning of that call, I said, this is more than about just us. Okay. We have to get back to us so that we can show up and bloom fully. Okay. Bloom fully in life so that we can fulfill our purpose, okay? I want us to think for a moment, how much time have you wasted, okay? How much time have you wasted starting and stopping, okay? Tessa had to leave us. <laughs> um, so how much time, okay? Think about it, okay? I know it's a bit of an ouch. It's like, how many years have I had the same things on my list, okay? Okay, those in the beta group, didn't come away with guilt and learned helplessness. They came away with massive results, guys. You heard just a handful of them, okay? A handful. They came away with massive results from about 15 hours worth of work. That's what it what it boils down to, okay? If we break down 10 weeks, one and a half hours-ish, then we get about 15 hours of our time to get you ex exponential results. Is it worth it? Are your goals and your dreams worth this? You have to start to evaluate that. So I, another question I want you to ask yourself is how many, how much money have you spent on um, workout equipment or gym memberships or diet programs that you didn't stick to, you didn't use these things, you use them for a month, you use them a couple days a month. They just didn't. Like the planners that you bought and you used for a couple of weeks and you forgot about, okay? What do you have to show for it? What do you have to show for that money that you've invested? I know it hurts. The average spending is anywhere from under $100 to well over $5,000 on stuff for New Year's resolutions, on stuff for that goals in January. That's each person spends anywhere from under hundred to over $5,000. That's a lot of money to spend on things that gather dust and incur guilt. Okay. That gets you in this place of guilt of learned helplessness. Okay. 0% of the beta group regretted their investment. 0%. Okay. In fact, this is what they shared. The investment was totally worth it. Being the mom you want, the business manager that you want, the wife you want does not come by accident. It takes intentionality. Now I know how to take who I want to be as a wife, a mom, a businesswoman, et cetera, and create that person. That alone is worth its weight in gold, let alone what I paid for the Back to Me program. 
Here's another one. I had intended on paying for the Back to Me program with a credit card. I did not see how I could afford it at the time, but I also knew I couldn't afford not to. Through a series of errors on my part, I ended up paying cash. I thought for sure we would go in the red that month before we got our next paycheck, and yet we never did, okay? Sometimes, like, I was teaching a class yesterday, and I was like, sometimes God's waiting for our first step. He's like, ah, uh, remember I talked about something called faith in the Bible? Quit checking your bank account. Faith. Sometimes it's like, I'm a step. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And that's what this woman did. She stepped in. She's like, we're going to go in the red. This could be really bad. But it never happened. So investing in action taking before discovering what your true desires are. Remember, they're not the surface ones. Okay. They're not those surface reactions we have to frustrations in our life. It's a deeper desire. They cost you a lot of time and money over the years. Just it's okay. All right. Sometimes you just have to realize I've wasted days and weeks of my life pursuing the wrong things. Sometimes you just have to put your hands on your chest right now. And you just say, Hey, I've, I've spent days and weeks and years of my life pursuing the wrong things. I fully love and accept myself. Can you just do that with me? I just fully love and accept myself for my failings. Even though I've spent thousands of dollars over the years in ways that did not pay off, I fully love and accept myself. I did the best I knew how. I did the best I knew how. Do you feel a difference when you just give yourself that grace? Okay, the grace in a year and at a time of year when it's just like, it's go time, push yourself. What if it's a time of grace, guys? What if it's a time of receiving and reflection? Okay. We didn't know better before. Okay. You didn't know you, you've been doing the best you knew how, but now you know something better. Okay. Now you know how, and doesn't it all make a lot more sense when we take into account what God says about the new year and what nature is screaming at us about the new year. Doesn't it make sense why in 2024 our, our goals are the same that they were in 2023 and why we didn't achieve them. Okay. That's where we have to ask ourselves. Okay. At the end of 2024, do I want it to look like the end of 2023? It's that moment of truth. Okay. Do you want it to look the same? Now you might be having action steps pop in your head. Okay. No, I don't want it to be the same. I don't want it to be the same. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I can really do this. Okay. Are they just a recycled version of those same plans that you've already tried and failed? Oftentimes it's just that same, those same things recycling too much time is passing guys really too much time is passing. Our kids are getting older. We're getting older. Sometimes our bank accounts are getting worse. Like our homes are crumbling around us. Okay. It's, I don't want you to miss out on all that's possible because I can, I literally know where you'll be just a few weeks into the program because I can see the transformation just a couple weeks in and they're going, whoa, wait a second. I got some footing here. I've got some direction. I just, I feel different about, about life. Okay. Just a few weeks into the program, I see where you will be. And it just breaks my heart to think of you guys at the end of 2024, just looking like the end of 2023. Okay. Because I've done it. I've done the pick a song for the year. I've done choose a word for the year. Take that time to really reframe how you want to feel about it. Make the list of goals. I, there's a measure of value in those guys. There is. There's a measure of value. But that's not what gets you exponential results, okay? Focus like you've never had in all your life, okay? Focus. Clarity of what you really desire, okay? What you really, really, really desire like you've never had before, okay? That follow through in the valley of the shadow of death that you find yourself walking through to get to your end goal, having somebody there walking it with you, it's it, it's a game changer, guys. Game changer, okay? Picking you, sometimes I'm just there like scraping you guys up like, like roadkill, you know? I'm just like, life to these bones, life to these bones. <laughs> and I'll tell you what's made a difference for me, okay? Opening myself up to the inconceivable, the impossible, literally the supernatural, opening myself up, leaving room for what's better than I could have ever dreamed up on my own. 
that's part of what's making this big difference, okay? That's part of what the Back to Me program is, that opening up, really learning how to set aside how and get to the bottom of what it is that you actually do desire. We get tripped up by the how. Don't let yourself get tripped up by, but how, how would I pay for this? Or how, how could I run a marathon? I can't even walk 10 steps without my knee hurting. We talk ourselves out of so many things since we're going, how, 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 okay? But what if you started going, but what, what is it that I desire and why do I desire it? Like, what is my real why? Okay. What's my real why? Not all the, you know, you know, one of the women here said, I thought I had my why, you know, the one that motivates you to keep going, the one everyone says you need before you start something new. Yeah, I didn't. Claire taught me the desired state, which is basically like you find your why on steroids. The why at its core, it took me a little while to really grasp the concept. I'll be honest, I felt like a dumb kid in class. Thankfully, Claire was patient with me because once I got it, it changed everything. This why, this deep why, next level why. I've never been taught this stuff. All I know is Holy Spirit downloads, downloads to me and I output it. That's what I know. I sit down and say, breathe, breathe your word through me, Father. Breathe your life through me. And that's what comes out, okay? So we start on February 23rd. That's when we start. At, we'll probably do our classes around this time. Everybody was able to show up for this. So hopefully that works with your schedules. So February 23rd is when we start, okay? 10 weeks for $17.95. 10 weeks. Anyone who signs up tonight, though, will receive a bonus. I just love to give those bonuses, okay? Just give those bonuses. So $200 value. It's a one-on-one -on -one call with me. We'll spend some time, full hour, one-on-one. -on -one. Really just figuring out where you are, figuring out where you want to be, just getting getting that, I don't know, there's just an intimacy that happens on those one-on-one -on -one calls. So if you sign up by tonight, you'll also get the free one-on-one -on -one call. So excited about that. You'll be getting an email to the link to the sign up page. It may already be in your inboxes, but uh, before I close us with prayer, does anybody have any questions? Do you have any comments today? I see I've got some comments here that I can, um, that I can read. Oh, Carol says she wants to step out of her comfort zone and read more. Yes. Comfort zone. You do not prosper in your comfort zone. <laughs> yes. We don't want that list of achievements. We want to have experienced this new level of experiencing. Wow. Yes. Yes. Love it. So if anybody has any questions, any comments, you can do in the chat or you can open your beautiful camera so we can see your beautiful face and you can open your wonderful microphone and you can talk to us. Any questions, any comments, any takeaways, any like, wow, this was amazing. I haven't thought about this ever before. That kind of thing. And we have somebody hopping back in here. <laughs> Just want to make sure that if anybody needs anything, has any questions, anything. Are you excited about 2024? I'm like really excited because I get to keep reflecting. Okay. We get to keep reflecting. Then we're going to be moving into, remember February 23rd is when we start. That's where we start defining our desires. By the time you hit April, by the time you hit God's new year, by the time you hit spring, you will be ready. You'll be ready to explode. You'll be ready to output the energy because you're going to know where the energy should be focused. Okay. Just like one of the women said, you know, I was throwing my energy. I was throwing my resources in all these directions. They weren't making me feel any better. They weren't improving my life and I wasn't reaching my goals. So that's why we're working together through February. Oh, I got to mute somebody unless they have something to say. Um, I'll mute them and they can always unmute again. So anyway, that's why we're doing this end of February. So we're working through this through March and then April hits. You're ready. That's go time. And that's where you're still going to be in the prog. You're still going to be in the program at that point. It's 10 weeks. So you're going to be in the program in the preparation mode and you're going to be in the program for go time and you're going to be in the program 
past go time when you're going, eh, ah, and I'm like, come on, come on, come on, arm around you. We're strong together. Let's keep moving forward. We're not stopping. Okay. So any question? Yeah, the timing's perfect. Oh my goodness. Yes. I was just like, when I looked at those dates, I was like, man, this is just like, this is perfect timing for everything we've talked about today. So any questions, any comments, one last, this is your last opportunity. You got anything to say, open the mics, drop it in the chat. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. So everybody's hearts are clear. I want to pray over you guys. I want to pray over your 2024. Okay. I want to pray over your minds, your bodies, over everything you put your hand to that it would prosper. Okay. So father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this core group of women who showed up today, ready to learn, ready to grow. Thank you for all that they were able to go like, whoo, Sigh of relief. Maybe I don't have to hit it so hard right now. Maybe it's good enough to be in reflection. Yes, continuing with those habits, but in reflection, maybe I'm enough. Okay. Maybe I am enough. Maybe my resources are enough. Maybe I don't need anything more. Maybe I'm actually good. Okay. Maybe I'm actually good in this reflection, in this preparation. Okay. Maybe it's not time to jump ahead. Maybe I need to gather more. Maybe that's what I need. So bless them, Father. Bless them as they go through this program, Father. As they go, okay, I thought I knew my why. I thought I knew my why, but I'm ready to get to the deeper why. I'm ready to know why I was created on this earth and what God really has for me. And it's always, God, what you have for us, it's always way bigger than we could have ever even anticipated, Father. Bless them, Father, as they step in faith and say, you know what? This feels impossible, whether I just feel like I don't have the time for it, or I don't feel like I have the money for it, or I just feel scared. You know, like one of the women, she felt scared. She just, that fear holding them back of like, but what's the process gonna look like? What kind of vulnerability am I gonna have to show forth? What am I gonna have to feel through this? Father, I just thank you that you come with us through the valley of the shadow of death and where two or three are gathered in your name you are there father so it's not just me walking alongside of them and picking them up and being the strength you're on the other side of them father you're gonna be there with us so i just thank you thank you for your presence that gives this life that gives this energy Bless them, Father. Bless their health. May they prosper in everything that their hand touches, Father. May their bank accounts go up in Jesus' name. May their strength and health go up. But also, Father, Father, you have given us free will. They get to choose. They get to choose their path. Bless them, Father. I know choosing a path can sometimes just be like, oh, I'd rather avoid this. But they get to choose this path. Thank you for the freedom of choice. Thank you for that, Father. Bless these ones. Thank you for them, Father. May they be blessed and may you just hover above them, urging them along the path that you have for them. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. I love you guys so much. So happy. I'm going to check the chat. Aw, oh, thank you guys so much. I'm so happy for you guys. You guys showed up and you received, right? <laughs> All right. I love you guys so much. Have an incredible day. And I'm so excited to see you in the Back to Me program. Bye.